Good morning, it's Monday, February 15th. It's just after seven o'clock. It's President's Day holiday, so here in the United States, for those of you international. Um, so it's a holiday today, I have the day off from work, so I'm here at the West End Gun Club, just making my way into the range. Um, going to try and shoot on the top side today. Uh, I've never shot up on the new bays, the upper rifle range that they set up. And today it's supposed to be open for use. <clears throat> the main range is closed, as you can see on this sign here, because uh, Mondays is usually the day for range maintenance. So that's why the ROs are here. And it looks like they're setting up a bunch of new Connex containers, I guess is a barricade. They're gonna fill that with dirt. I think that's where they were moving all that dirt last week when I was here. So it's kind of cool that they're getting some, getting some work done. But I'm just gonna go over to the rimfire rimfire range to grab a, a target stand out of the cons container because I actually left both my target stands in there that I use for paper targets and then uh, we'll circle our way around and go back to the go up to the top side and we'll take a look at that and see how it is up there anyway let's go ahead and get over to this cons container and grab my target stand and get up there So I'm standing here, this is probably right around the 300 yard line, or it's our 300 yard impact area. And I'm gonna swivel around the camera so you can kind of take a look at where the shotgun range is at. They just set this up. And here's the rifle pads you can see back there. And um, you can kind of see that's the uh, 300 yard pad from here, 400 and the 500 yard pad. Um, you're shooting at an uphill incline, unfortunately, just like it is, I think it's even worse than uh, the Desert Marson range in, in terms of the angle. Uh, but we'll make do and uh, But yeah Let me go ahead and just uh, set up my targets. Uh, I got to grab my laser range finder out of the back of the uh, Got to grab my laser range finder out of the back of the vehicle and then uh, we'll uh, Kind of set up here Like a complete idiot. I forgot a bunch of stuff uh, for today. I forgot the The target I was actually going to use for rimfire, which is just this for our 8x8 quarter inch AR500 steel. I've got backing on it for the Magneto Speed T1000, which I did bring with me. And I forgot the, the two by four with the hook on it for that steel target. So won't be shooting rimfire today. Well, I might try to shoot rimfire. I do have a, a six inch round, like a uh, pop-up target, which I use for center fire. I might be able to hit that with the, I might be able to register hits with that, with the rimfire. We'll see. So I'll just try that. Um, I forgot my shooting mat. So I have this ghetto mat that I keep in the back of the, my Jeep. And I also forgot shooting seas. So we'll see if I can see my shots on paper. I set up a target at 200 yards, 200 yard paper um, for my six screen more, which was what I brought out today. So for those of you wondering, uh, I brought out my six screen more, six millimeter creed more in the ARC, sorry, American Rifle Company, mousing field action. This is like the first gen action. Uh, and I did bring, I did bring my rear bag with me, of course, <laughs> remember that. Uh, but I don't really, I haven't shot this in probably 18, 18 months, 24 months. Uh, but it shoots. I've probably only got maybe 600 rounds in the pipe on this thing. It's a, it's a good rifle. It shoots really well. Um, the gunsmith, my gunsmith, the RO here at the Western Gun Club is the one who built this for me. If you want more information on this gun, I have a, a video on this. And I also have a very lengthy article. I have like three or four articles in that series just discussing this whole build. Uh, just to recap, for those of you who are new to the channel and haven't watched some of my older stuff from a couple years back, American Rifle Company, Mousing Field Action. It's a Bartlein 24-inch uh, barrel. I don't even remember, 24-inch barrel. It's a one in seven five twist. One in seven five? I totally don't remember. Um, but it's chambered to shoot 105s, the Burger hybrids. So there, it's a, it's got that uh, short chamber. I think it's got a 109 freebore. It's a, this is like the first gen or whatever, uh, the early generation Mazing or uh, MPA BA comp chassis. I have my, I just utilized my same Atlas Cal from all my for the all my rifles. Uh, the Area 419 uh, muzzle brake, the Hellfire, and. Uh, 
that's kind of it. Oh, in a uh, American Rifle Company uh, rings, this is their M10 QD mount, and then I have a Vortex Razor HD AMG. This is the six to 24 50 mil tube with the 50 mil objective, which I do like the scope actually. It's not bad. This has got the the uh, the 2C reticle, I think. So it's got the it's actually got crosshairs in the center, not the open 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 crosshair with the dot. That's the later one. I actually have that one on my Savage. Some people might say, hey, why don't you switch them, right? Put this, the crosser on the Savages, but I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me. I can shoot both reticles just fine. Um, anything else I'm missing? Oh, sorry, the trigger, Huber trigger is two stage, uh, breaks the two pounds. Uh, it's not, it's supposed to, it was supposed to be one-on-one. -on -one. It's not, it's like more like half pound 1.5, uh, but it's, it is what it is. And I had this accessory here, uh, fairly recently, I don't know, a couple months back, well, maybe more than that, but I bought the little two round holder there just for, to look cool, I guess. Um, but, and the reason why I brought this out today is one, I haven't shot in a while, two, uh, if, you, if you follow me on Instagram, I have finally acquired the auto thrower auto trickler, the auto thrower auto trickler reloading system with the AMD FX120i scale. So it's like, it's fully automated. Basically, you dial in what charge you want. So for right now, I'm shooting 41 grains of H4350 with the 105s. I just dial 41, put the little cup there. It, you know, the scale automatically zeroes out. It tell, then the, uh, the auto thrower just throws and it starts trickling up to 41 and that's it. And you pull out the cup, dump the powder into your case, put the cup back under the thrower and it just does it all over, you know, it keeps doing it. So no more hand trickling for me, which is kind of the reason why I hate reloading now. Cause I always hand, I always hand measure all of my, my uh, rifle rounds that, well, I think what was I back when I was shooting service rifle, service rifle, I still, I might've just thrown my, my 200, 300 yard ammo out of the hopper, out of the thrower without measuring it. Like I measured it. And then after that, I just threw it, but I don't think a hand weighed every one, but my 80, my 80 grain, 600 yard ammo, I definitely hand weighed those every charge or every cartridge, I hand weighed, hand checked those. Uh, but for all my bolt rifle stuff, I'll, I'll pour it, I'll, I'll throw it out of the, the Harrell Precision thrower and then I'll trickle up. And so that gets tedious after a while. So that's why I finally got this whole setup. It's thousand dollars, but it works out and uh, it makes reloading a lot easier for me. And there's a car coming up, so I'll, we'll see these guys yeah, I think they're probably coming up because they closed the main line. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started setting up because there's more people showing up, so it's going to be hard to shoot and talk at the same time if there's more people around. So I'm getting some light strikes on this, which is not good. Oh crap. Well, this is great. Now I'm getting light strikes out of this gun. Well, shit on me. What the heck's happening here? Well, this is weird. So, I think it's probably because I might have used frog lube on this thing, which is why it's gumming up. So I used frog lube in the bolt, which is a mistake. Um, that's probably what's gumming up this bolt so it's not getting full strength on the spring. I don't have the tools to disassemble this bolt, so it looks like I'm, I'm gonna be done for the day right now and just head down to the rimfire range. It's unfortunate. I totally forgot that I was gonna clean this 
bolt out and I had frog lube in it. Yep, looks like we're dead in the water today. Unless I could heat up this bolt to get the lube to melt. Got four rounds to fire. Accuracy isn't all that great. Let's go down to the next shot. All right, so it's light striking. Um, I know for a fact it's bolt lube, the bolt lube, because I disassembled and tried frog lube, which was a, a problem that I did. I had with my CZ455. I tried frog lube in that. And so I did this one first in my CZ, took my CZ out first and shot that and had bolt issues. So once I cleaned that out with the frog lube and it put regular grease or regular oil on there, it was fine. So this one, I totally forgot to strip this bolt and clean out all the frog lube. Um, so that was my mistake. This has been in my safe for 16, 18, 24 months without being fired. So that lube is pretty gummed up. So that's preventing the striker from actually falling fast enough. So I'm shooting 41 grains of H4350 behind a Burger 105 hybrid with a uh, alpha munitions brass and a CCI BR4, which should be pushing around 3075 roughly out of this barrel. So the load is not shooting as good as it usually does, but could part of it be me having a little issue dealing with the fact that it's light striking. Accuracy is, eh, I'm throwing a couple rounds. It's only, it's probably a minute right now of angle at best. I'll have to go take a look at the target. It could be about a two inch group at 200 yards, a little bit less than that. But I'm gonna go ahead and try to stretch it to 300 on some steel, and then um, maybe I'll go grab my 22 and try to shoot 300 on my six inch steel target. And then we'll head down to the Rimfire Ranch because I still need to do some work in the Connors container anyway.
pulled in my targets, gonna head down to the rimfire range, but before we go over there, I'm gonna just show you my 200 yard paper target with the six Creedmoor. This is kind of my warm up shots of the day, shot here and then drifted to this side. Um, then I shot this four shot group before we took a break, shot a six shot group through this round. Um, I think this is one that, you know, didn't fire, so I had to rechamber it. But other than that, this is okay, I threw this round. And then here's a five shot group here, but we're holding about half a minute if you, if you're holding it right, this is a, this is about a three quarter minute, one minute group right here at 200 yards. Uh, some left to right here, left to right. This is not bad. If I'm, I don't know what the heck I did here, but anyway, that's kind of my six read more. Shot at about 15 rounds at 300, and that's that's that I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of my gear. I gotta walk it down to the Jeep, and then we'll just hightail it over to the rimfire range. While I'm here at the range, I wanted to go ahead and uh, check in on the kitty litter I put in uh, earlier this week. It seems like it's absorbing some of that odor, so I'll probably uh, sweep this up maybe the end of the month and then uh, put out the other 25 pound bag that I got here. And I also brought in these, these magnets. Um, they're pretty strong actually, so they, uh, they're like magnets with hooks on them. Fudge hard to come off but uh basically I got these off Amazon to just hold some banners we have here and uh the funny thing is I went on Amazon to look for some like high strength magnet hooks and people were complaining in their reviews that these don't hold any weight but I checked and we using a, a scale to see the breaking force it took about 45 pounds to break this off of the uh off of uh, any kind of steel plate you put on there so I don't know what people are complaining about anyway I got these uh banners here they're NL22 banners, and I got a, a Vortex banner because Vortex gave us some free stuff for the matches, some hats and stuff that I was giving out. And uh, anyway, I have like these NL22 banners right here, and I figure I'll just put them up on the uh, condens container. Um, it should hold them in wind. I'm, I was thinking about putting it outside to see how it holds up, but I'm going to put one right here, like on the inside of the, uh, the door right here. And... Uh, See if it like kind of holds up right here. Little banner there. Before I take off from the range, I want to show the new Really Right Stuff uh, quick release clamp for the Atlas bipods. This came out this past week, so I ordered one. Uh, I was using it this morning on the uh, upper range off center fire. I hear the rear fire range just with the Voodoo. Let's take this off for you. Anyway, it's uh, it's basically replacing the 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 original, well not the original, but the first clamp that Really Right Stuff came out with, which is basically a knob. I don't have it with me because I took it off. Um, but this is just a quick release clamp and it just mates directly to the Atlas Cal or Atlas bipods. Um, it's that ARMS 17 compatible bipods. I think it's ARMS 17. Anyway, any any ARMS compatible, ARMS 17 compatible mount, this should work with it. And uh, it's basically, you know, just a quick release lever so you don't have to use knobs. I kind of like knobs, to be honest, for the inconsistencies of dovetails because I've been in photography for a while and certain clamps and certain dovetails don't mix, right? If you use the really right stuff, like standard per se, if you use that dovetail standard, you should be fine. But I come across times when I need to use someone else's clamp or their head for photography, not for just shooting. but. Um, and or I might need to use someone else's plates and uh, they don't work with clamps so certain clamps like if they're if it's a quick release clamp oftentimes the uh, not oftentimes but sometimes the clamps are too small or they're sorry the dovetail is too small or the dovetail is too big and you can't you can't clamp it on because it's too big or you clamp it on and it's just loose and it slides uh, you know you get some you know Amazon bought plates or whatever um, universal plates and sometimes they don't work with my release right stuff quick release clamps and that's why I like the knob clamps because you it doesn't matter with a knob you just keep tightening it down and it, it's fine right it it's not preset like these clamps are these quick release clamps um, so that's why I kind of stick with knobs just if you come across those inconsistencies if you have control over your dovetails then quick release clamps are fine because you know that your your dovetails will work with your clamps and so I'm only going to use this clamp with my with my guns, right? And if someone else tries to borrow it and doesn't work, then oh well, right? If it doesn't work with their gun or their system. Anyway, it's nice to have a quick release because it's just faster. If I wanna 
in a stage I can save several seconds just by easily, you know, sliding back and forth without having to screw the knob down. And uh, so it's uh, pretty handy. It's, it secures pretty well. I have, it's really tight. My only complaint so far, I'm gonna write a short blog article on this because there's not much to write a blog article on a clamp. But this, this, uh, this adapter, this bipod adapter weighs twice as much as the, the Really Right Stuff screw knob clamp. So I don't know the, sorry, I, I, forgive me because I don't know the model numbers off the top of my head, but I think it's called BT Cal. That one's for the uh, BT Cal. I think that's the one for the, the, the knob clamp for the Atlas bipods. But I remember it was 50.1 grams. This one was like 105. I have to look at, I took a photo of the scale, but it was 105, so just over twice as much, uh, twice as heavy. I mean, do you really care in the long run? I don't know, some people might care on a hunting rig or something, but on a hunting rig, you're probably not gonna be using like this Atlas bipod of this nature. You might be using something else. Um, but the cool thing too about this is that this is compatible with uh, Picatinny rails as well. So that's kind of the unique aspect of really rest of clamps is they can make them so they work with both Picatinny and uh, Ar Ar Arca Swiss dovetails, Arca Swiss style dovetails. And so that's pretty nice. I mean, that's why you're paying that premiums because really rest of takes the time to engineer these things. I don't have a pick rail on here. Oh, I do. I have a pick rail on top. But uh, if I were so inclined, just to show you an example of me clamping this on a pick rail, there you go, it's on a pick rail. So I could shoot my gun upside down if I wanted to, I think. Can I shoot my gun upside down? Yeah, I could shoot my gun upside down. Anyway, <laughs> just uh, wanted to show you how the pick rail works. I have a pick rail on my, on my ND bridge. That was some weird sound. Somebody just started rapid fire. Anyway, so that's that. I'm gonna write a short blog art or blog article on this. Again, there's not much to say in a in a in a blog article about a bipod adapter, other than the fact that it weighs twice as much and it's expensive. Hate to say that about really rare stuff, but it is pricey. Really rare stuff makes quality gear. Their fit and finish on our stuff is really good. If you have any problems, they'll fix it for you. Like I had a problem with my my quick release uh, sore clamp that I replaced my on my BH55, that actually didn't even fit on the head because I tried to um, I tried to put the clamp onto the ball head stem and it wouldn't fit. And so I called, I emailed them, and said, "This doesn't work. Um, it doesn't fit for some reason. It looks like it's over, it's undersized." And so they uh, they they asked me to send in my head and they said, "Yeah, they they had a run of the clamps where the where the where the where the where the, uh, the ball stem meets the clamp." Um, on the bottom of the clamp, they actually undersized those um, during that run, so they fixed it for me. Um, but yeah, really rare stuff. They make some pricey gear. This is not an exception. <sighs> Can't remember off my head. It's, it's over 100 bucks, so 100 dollars for a clamp. A lot of people are going to say well, that's a lot of money, and it, it is. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, when you compare it to a bipod, um, it costs more than a Harris bipod. So. I'll, I'll, I'll write in the article, but if you want one, really write stuff, check them out. They have these now, the quick release clamps for the Atlas bipods. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, I didn't really do much shooting. I fired 25 rounds up top side. Uh, a couple guys, some guys showed up, and so I didn't really have the opportunity to set up my... I was going to shoot rim fire, but considering that this thing was... My uh, Creedmoor was light striking, so I'm gonna, when I get home, I'm going to clean out that bolt. And I'm going to bring it out again to make sure it doesn't light strike. Um, but just a tip... Do not use frog lube on a bolt action rifle. I know people don't like frog lube in general. I've had no problems with the AR, but do not use it in a bolt action rifle in the bolt mechanism. So I'm gonna, I had that same problem with my CZ and I figured out that was it, but I didn't remember that I also did it to my, my mousing field. So I'm gonna take that bolt apart when I get home. I'm gonna brake clean that thing out and then um, just use regular oil. But um, it was light striking, so I wasn't really feeling the incentive to try to shoot my rimfire there, especially when I forgot my rimfire targets for some, today, my uh, my eight my eight by eight plate, and so I just you know whatever I just shot my twenty five yards. But now I know how it's laid out, so it gives me an idea of what I need to bring with me to shoot up there. Um, actually, I didn't need to bring my target anyway, my popper, because. I have access to that Connus container up there and that's where they store all the long range star steel targets. And so I could have just taken one out of there. So now I know I don't need to bring my own steel target. I can just borrow it from there. I'll just let Aaron know that I did that. Um, he's the other match director, but I have keys for that, that container. 
Um, and I know that there's going to be rails out there for target stands, so I need to bring a target stand. So I kind of have an idea of what I need to bring with you next time I show up here. So um, I'm going to try to shoot up there sometime, maybe next month on a Monday or Tuesday. Tuesdays are open. So when I have a day off, I'll take a day off on a Tuesday, I'll shoot up there. One other thing I wanted to mention while I'm driving out of the range is that the West End Gun Club actually made an announcement on the forums, which they didn't really send an email notification, so I need to follow up on this. They're saying that we can start holding matches again. So um, I think there's some details, minor details about COVID-19 uh, waivers and stuff. But they said we can start matches when, uh, if match directors may start matches when they feel it's appropriate. And so I'm going to look into that. But I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to hold the February match. I think it's just too early notice or too late notice rather. So I, I don't want to hold the match right now. March is most likely what's I'm going to hold the match. I'm going to uh, look into what's going on, figure out what the logistics are, and if it's cool, then I'm going to I'm going to hold the match in March. So if you want to if you want to be notified, if you've been trying to get to this match, uh, let me know. Send me a direct message or just comment in the YouTube video, this vlog video, uh, that you want to be notified, and then I'll let you know when the March match goes registrations go live, and. Uh, I'm trying to try to send an email list too because I want to be able to send notifications to people when matches or whatever events are taking place. So um, I'll let you know when I'm going to do that. And yeah, that's that. So if you're interested in the March matches, or sorry, NRL 22 matches, the Western Gun Club, we may start again in March. Uh, we'll see. But it's. I don't know the details, so I can't tell you what the odds are, 50-50 or, or, or whatever, but I'm, I'm, my intent is to try to do it. And I may actually in decrease the uh, fees uh, starting off again just to get some more incentive for people just to show up and shoot. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. Sorry for that wasn't much shooting again. I. 25 rounds on the, of my six Creed more, didn't shoot my rimfire, forgot some gear, um, and that's that. So <laughs> I kind of understand what I need to do up there, so I'll, hopefully I'll be re better prepared for when I shoot up on the upper ranges again. So that's it for this range vlog. Today is February, February 15th, Monday, President's Day here in the United States. Thanks for watching, and hopefully everyone else had a great day off, assuming you had the day off. I'll see you in the next vlog. I'm turning off a left once you there's actually a trail back behind on the top side of the range that was mapped by trailsoffroad.com it's been here for a long time but I just never bothered to go down it because I didn't know what was here so apparently there's this small trail back here because I see dirt bikers come up here in ATVs um, but it leads to uh, the Sierra road or whatever so I been wanting to check this place out after I saw it mapped on trails off-road and it's just it's kind of a thin one and a half uh, car wide trail, but it comes over around the back side of the range. So I'm just gonna take a look at this before uh, on the way out of the range instead of taking the normal range route. Um, the, or sorry, the normal range road. It's sh it's it's supposed to be a you know a pretty pretty tame road. Uh, you know, like a one or a two on difficulty, which is nothing. So hopefully. <laughs> Nothing goes wrong here. Worst case, I crawl to the range to get assistance. <laughs> but uh, it looks to be fine. But yeah. If this range, if you don't see this range vlog or this video, that means I didn't make it out of here. <laughs>